Tonight, as promised, I'm going to make a treat. You can do either for your family, guests that come over to your house, or you can make them for your children, or you can either make it as something that you could do at sport with your family as a family night activity. So I picked up some pretzel rods because I didn't have any. So I just used the Snyder's pretzel rods and you don't have to use a particular brand. I have also used the Great Value brand. I wasn't at Walmart, I was at Publix. So I picked these up. And so what we're gonna do is make holiday pretzel rods. Um, so that's why I grabbed those. I did not have to pick up candy milk. I already had pink candy milks. I also have red candy milks if I decide to do those. I always have red and I always have pink. These are colors that I feel like my customers always ask for. So I always have these colors. And so I also picked up these candy canes. So um, you will see how I put everything together. Um, I do not, by the way, I don't like candy canes at all, but I'm gonna use these tonight for um, the treats that I'm getting ready to make for the pretzel, um, the holiday pretzels. That's it guys, I just wanted to show you that. So I'm gonna go ahead on and get started and put everything together. Okay guys, so as you can see, I'm back. So I went ahead and I pulled out my parchment paper now, this is what I use to um, prep any treats that I make, such as like, um, sometimes I use it for my candy apples, sometimes I use it for um, my strawberries. I definitely use it for my pretzels, but you'll find that parchment paper is a very good product to use because anything that you're using that will have the potential to stick, it will not stick to parchment paper. And there is a difference in between parchment paper and then there's also, they have another brand. It's not parchment paper, but it's like, um, it has a film on it. Now, if you use that, that will stick. I made a mistake and used that one time before. I thought it was parchment paper, but it was not. And when I went to lift the item up, it was stuck to it. The paper was actually stuck to the candy apples. Parchment paper, is non-stick and so here is the parchment paper um there is a wilton's brand like if you're at hobby lobby's joann's or at michael's they sell a wilton's brand there's no particular brand um i happen to have been in the grocery store so i just picked up the rentals but it is smart grip easy you can reuse up to three times i don't reuse it um so you just, you know, you can wipe it off or whatever, but I don't reuse it. And like I said, the items that you put on it, it does not stick to it. So use parchment paper, that will help you out greatly. Also, as you can see, I've already poured my candy melts inside of my um, measuring cup. It's just a regular anchor measuring cup. You don't have to use that. You can use a plastic jar, whatever floats your boat, you can use it but I tend to use this. And also another thing that you wanna make sure that you do, it's your own um, personal preference. However, because I make treats for people, it is my business, I always wear gloves and I use the black gloves. The black gloves are more of a professional grade, which you can use any color, but white, it tends to show up a lot of mess. So a lot of treat makers use black and um, you can get them from Amazon. Um, I've even ran out and have purchased some from the beauty supply store. Um, but Amazon, I think you'll get more bang for your buck with them. These are size large and um, I like them not to be loose because once you start working with chocolate, I could probably have gotten a medium. I believe these are large. I could have gotten a medium because I like them to fit tight because when you start messing and manipulating with chocolate, if you have like a loose tip, you know, because the glove has space, then it will can sometimes touch um, some of the work that you're doing and then mess it up. And I don't like that to happen. So I could usually stand for a medium, but these are a large. And so I just make sure that I'm very careful with them. Okay, so also, 
I don't know if you can see here, I'll lower my camera. I've already taken out, I think I did one, two, three, four candy canes. And so I'm going to, when the time comes, I'm going to crush them. And as any of you know, red and white makes pink. And so that's why I decided to do the candy canes because when I crush them, you're going to get hints of pink inside. Like you'll see the red and white and you'll also see hints of pink because the, the pink and white will start to blend together. And so, yes, we all should know that the primary colors, red and white, makes pink. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead on and stick my chocolate candy melts into the microwave. Now, with the candy melts, you want to be careful when you're melting them. Um, you don't want to melt them for, like, you know, say, for instance, if you sit it in there for a minute, that may be too long because it is very easy to burn candy melts. So, I would say do it in intervals of 30 minutes and then check it to make sure that you know it's melting and stir it and then another 30 minutes until you melt it to its desired consistency but again don't put it on for a long period of time because it will burn so i'm going to go ahead and start the melting process okay so the chocolate has been melted and i only put it in the microwave for one minute not straight consistent one in in one minute let me back up i did not melt it for a minute consistently i melted it for 30 seconds then i paused it checked it stirred it put it back in for the second 30 minutes and that's what you want to do because like i said you can easily burn your chocolate and you want your consistency to be like this you want it to have a nice fluidy consistency. And so that's, you know that it's ready to dip. So when I dip it, I like to use a tall cup. And in this case, I'm going to use this cup that I got from the Atlanta Zoo. You don't have to use any particular cup. Get and start pouring my chocolate into the cup so that I can begin the process of dipping. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing because I have my camera mounted. So I hope you can see what I'm doing. But you can always ask questions open up dialog as questions and I'll be happy to answer them so now that I have my chocolate in my cup I want to dip it and hopefully you can see what I'm doing And you can bring it down as far as you like, leaving minimal uh, pretzel exposed, or you can leave as much exposed as you like. When you pull it out, you want to make sure you shake any excess off. Excess. And that's how it should look. And so there it is. And I hope you can see it. And then you just set it down on the parchment paper. And then you grab the next pretzel. There's the second one. And as you can see, it's not even. So like I said, you can clean it up in any manner that you like so that it has more even appearance. And place it down. See, it'll start to stiffen up. So now I'll just take my cup, I'll stick it in the microwave.
as you can see, I'm dipping it, roll them all around, making sure it gets a nice even amount. And then I'm going to allow the excess to the excess. Just like I said, you want to clean it up and use your fingertip to clean it up. And then you lay it down. Go to your next one. Find that you have to add more chocolate to melt it. But start out with a little bit. There's no need to, you know, start out with a whole bunch. At one time, start out with a little bit. If you find you need to add more, just add more to it and melt it in the same manner. Like I said, in increments. And keep it moving. That's that one. You can see it. As I said, if you feel like you want to straighten it up, you can. And just sit it down. Try to melt six, not melt six. I'm gonna try to get six, and then I will add. Um, I'll start crushing up this, and then I'll do whatever little design I'm gonna do on it, and then add it. So I did a. I took out a couple. I mean, I took out a quantity of twelve, and so I'm gonna do six one way and six in another style. So. I'll just show you that. And again, this is the same chocolate. I haven't added any more yet. I'm just going to stir. I haven't um, burned any, which is good. Because like I said, you don't want to burn any. So hopefully I can get two more before I have to melt more chocolate. And if you're trying it for the first time and you feel like, you know, you're not getting the desired result, Just keep trying, try it again, you know. Like I said, you can make it for your family. And one thing about kids, as well as my husband, if I mess up on something, because I'm trying it out for the first time, he is my biggest cheerleader. And he's like, oh, it's not gonna be wasted because I'll eat it, I'm the tester. So he lets me know that, hey, no worries, I got you. It didn't come out right. I got you. Okay, you want to sit that one. Okay, and so while I have you guys here, and also before I get forget, um, I was saying metal, but I was saying I'm gonna melt some more chocolate in the glass um, measuring cup. That's what I meant to say. I said metal, and also when I was talking about the type of paper that I purchased, that was the wrong paper. It was wax paper. Do not purchase wax paper. If you're using wax paper and you're making candy apples or things of that nature, it will stick. Parchment paper does not stick. So that was, I couldn't think of it at the time. And then it came to me and I was like, you know what? It was wax paper. And so if you use wax paper, your candy apple will stick to it. Um, I haven't tried it with chocolate, but I know I used it for the candy apples and I had that happen, so. Again, I'm just stirring the chocolate and making sure it's all melted. And when you take it out of the microwave, if you notice that all of it is not melted, you don't have to stick it back in the microwave. What you'll notice is a lot of times, um, because it's still hot, it will melt the remainder of the chocolate. Because it's still hot, the remainder of the chocolate will be melted with the current heat. 
And so, yeah. And that is perfect consistency. Look at that. Okay, so I want to go ahead and show you guys what I did. Um, so this is one that I did, and as you can see, I melted the chocolate, and then I added some of the crushed candy canes on it. And so that's that one. And then this is the second one. And what I like about them, I don't know if you can see it. I'm sorry, I might be holding them funny. So as you can see, they, they all have their own unique features. And that's what I like about them. They're never going to be identical, and that's what makes it super cool. So I hope I'm getting it in the frame. Okay, so I can see it now. So it's in the frame. And um, I just want to show you how I did that one. And then I'm going to do another dip one like these. And then I will be drizzling those. And then um, I think I may drizzle them with red. I'm not sure. But I should have some red chocolate left. But I'm going to go ahead on and um, dip the remainder, the second one. Well, the last one of this one. And then I have four more to go of these. And right now, I'll go ahead and dip one so I can show you how I added the crushed candy canes. That's that one. I just did that one. Okay, and now I'm going to add some of the candy canes. There's no rhyme or reason. Just add it. You can add however little or however much you like. And uh, yeah. And they are so pretty. see the chocolate dries fast like I was telling you guys it dries fast takes no time okay and then you just want to sit it there and let it dry so hopefully it's in the frame okay so now these are dry so let me try to move them over and like I said I'm going to drizzle these but I have one more to drizzle Okay guys, so the can the uh, pretzels with the drizzle is complete. As you can see, it's complete. So there are six, and then I have the six plain ones. I did have some chocolate. Here it is here, the Ziploc bag. And I just take and cut the tip off the end. So all you have to do is cut the tip off the end and um, then you can do your drizzle so i'm gonna go ahead and i'll let a little bit run here just to do a test and um, i'll do these two and you just drizzle
Okay. So now that I've done that, it, now I'm going to take some of my candy canes. If you can see the chocolate dries fast. So. It doesn't take a lot of time for the top chocolate to dry. You just get as much up there as you want. Like this is kind of big. I don't want that big piece up there. There we go. Like I said, there's no rhyme or reason. You just do it however you see fit. Okay guys, so I'm done. Here is the final view of the pretzel rods. I originally dipped them in pink chocolate and then I drizzled the first group in um, the first group of six because they're a total of a dozen. I drizzled them with uh, peppermints that I crushed. So they were peppermint candy canes. I crushed up four of them. And I do have some left so I know that when these get eaten, I can make some more. Then the others I dipped in the regular, um, again, the pink chocolate. And then I drizzled with some red chocolate. And then I added some, uh, can some candy cane um, pieces to those as well. And so next I'm going to put them in the little pretzel bags. And then I'll sit them out on my counter for display. And of course, anyone can eat them. I know my husband will. I'm not a fan of all this chocolate and peppermint and all this stuff, but a lot of people, they love this. It's like a hit for them. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys, hopefully it's not a shadow, show you guys the final look. Your drizzle can be as thick or as thin as you like. However, um, it depends on the size of the hole that you cut in the bag. And so my favorite, of course, would be these. I just love how they turned out. And um, yeah. And here are the others. And just the drizzle. And some candy cane chunks on it. So that's it. I'll go ahead and get these wrapped up and then I will put them in the um, the container that I'm going to display them in. And um, that's it. So here's the final look. It's super easy, something fun you could do with your kids or that you can make for your family or friends. Hi guys, so I just wanted to come up here to show you how everything looked with the finished product. So again, um, well not again, I don't know if I showed this, but this Marion Bright sign I got from um, at home a couple of years back. I probably had it for two years now. This gnome that I added, I got from, where did I get this gnome? I got the gnome from Marshalls on Sunday. This jar here I've had for a while, and so I just added the marshmallows um, that I picked up from Marshalls. So in case somebody makes coffee, myself or my husband, um, you can do the twisted marshmallows or the regular traditional marshmallow minis I have in there. And I just added a red bow. 
to go with the red and the Marian bright sign. And then I added the little gold Christmas tree that I got from Hobby Lobby for 50% off. And this dish here I got from Hobby Lobby. I had that for a couple of years as well. And um, this is what I knew I was going to stick the pretzels in. And so let's get a closer look. So these are the bags that I was telling you guys, the little pretzel bags. I actually buy my items, like my supplies for my small business. Like I told you, I have a small treat making business and it is a home-based business. So I buy my products in bulk. So you can also purchase the bags that I have the pretzels in from Michael's. They also have them at Joann's and also at Hobby Lobby's, Hobby Lobby and also at Walmart. And so um, they're very inexpensive. I don't like to leave stuff like this exposed. Like I said, I'm here in Georgia and it's infamous for ants. So I don't wanna invite any creatures to think that I'm leaving out treats for them. So I have also sealed it. So if you look here at the end, it's a clear seal on it. I have a magic sealer. And so that's what I seal the bottom of it with. And that's how I seal my treats. Um, also, I do my cake pops the same way. And so I just wanted to show you how I display that. And then here are the other ones with the red drizzle. And it's sealed at the bottom as well. And so my husband has already been ready to partake in them. I think he's already had one. And I was like, okay, you can have at it once I film. But anyway, I just wanted to come up here to show you guys how you can... Um, you know, make these little treats inexpensive at home to have for your children or something you can make with your children. And you can also have for your family or friends to enjoy. So that's it. Um, I just wanted to show you what that looked like. And I hope you guys got some inspiration. And um, if you like them, you make them and you enjoy them as much as my husband does. Isn't that amazing?